the first in the morning, we're on day 201. Never, never for a single moment lose your freedom and never destroy anybody else's freedom. That's what religion means to me. A religious person remains free and helps the people who come in contact with him to be free. He never possesses anybody and he never allows anybody to possess him. It needs constant vigilance because our minds always want to cling. And in cling we lose. In cling we start to commit suicide. Then a very strange situation arises. We hate the person we love and want to destroy the person we cling to. A very strange situation, but if you understand it, it is perfectly clear and logical. You hate the person because he has destroyed your freedom. You hate the situation because you are imprisoned in it. You are a prisoner, and you are a clinger because the known, the familiar, gives you a certain comfort, and you are afraid of the unknown, the beyond. So you go on doing something which is self contradictory On the one hand, you cling, on the other hand, you want freedom, and that is what all the people of the world are struggling with. They cling to the very cage in which they want to be free and their whole life remains just a futile exercise. They cannot be free because they cling and they can't destroy the cage because then there is nothing left to cling to. And they also cannot drop the idea of being free because that is their intrinsic nature. It is impossible to drop it. There is no way to do it. Not a single human being has been able to do it up to now and nobody is ever going to succeed in doing it because it is not that we love freedom. In fact, we are free and only in freedom can we grow. Day 202. It is good that in the West, TV is now being called the idiot box. In fact, only idiots sit before it. The box is not as much of an idiot as the people who sit before it, and they go on sitting. Now the average American sits before the idiot box five to six hours per day glued to the chair. If this goes on and on, America is going to become the stupidest country in the world. They have to somehow get rid of this nonsense. And what do they go on watching? The same murder and the same violence and rape and the same old stories. The same triangles. Two women. One man or two men, one woman. It is such stupidity. Man has been writing the same story again and again, and there are fools who go on watching it. The story is the same, the plot is the same, the strategy is the same. There is nothing new in it. It is far more interesting to watch your own mind because it is far more insane and far more inventive too. If you simply go on watching it, you will be surprised. You will find more pictures for lovemaking than any psychologist has ever discovered. You will defeat all Masters and Johnsons and Kinsley reports, the old master of Vesayana and all his postures for lovemaking. Your mind is perfectly capable of inventing such absurd postures. And the mind is so interesting. You will do all kinds of violence and all kinds of murders, and you will commit suicide, and everything will happen. Simply go on watching. And the miracle is you don't have to pay for it. Then slowly, slowly, this whole scene starts disappearing. As you become more alert, it starts disappearing. As you become more conscious, it loses its grip on you. One day the greatest miracle in life happens. The mind simply disappears and there is vast emptiness and nothing to observe. You are left in absolute solitude. That is meditation. And out of that solitude, thousands of flowers of bliss, of beauty, of truth, of godliness bloom. Day 203. Ordinarily people are not happy when they are alone. They feel very empty, they feel something is missing. They can't live alone for long periods. Even an hour looks like many hours. They escape into a relationship. The relationship is just an escape from oneself. It is not a true relationship, it is negative. A man falls in love with a woman just to avoid his loneliness. A woman falls in love with a man just to avoid her loneliness. The relationship is negative, and what can you expect out of a negative relationship? Misery, quarreling, nagging, fighting, jealousy, possessiveness, domination, all kinds of ugly things. A positive relationship is a totally different one. You are not trying to escape from yourself. You love to be yourself. You love your loneliness. You rejoice in it. And whenever you find time, you move into it. But in loneliness, so much bliss is created that you have to share it. It becomes like a burden, like a cloud full of rain from water. It has to shower. It doesn't matter whether the earth needs it or not. It does not matter whether the trees are receptive or not. It has to shower. It has to unburden itself. Remember the greatest burden in life is when you are overflowing with bliss. Everything else can be carried, but bliss has to be shared. It is the greatest burden, sweet, but a monotonous burden. You cannot carry it alone. You need friends to share it with. Then a relationship is positive. Then you don't fall in love. You rise in love. I still need to look there. I thought, you know, when you said escape to a relationship, like maybe you 
Miss Rope then. <laughs> supposed to escape from a relationship. <laughs> Or life can be a calculation, then it is prose, then it is mundane, then it is arithmetic, then it is logic, but everything is dry, no flowers, no dance, no song, one does not live, but only drag. But life can also be lived as poetry, as love, as music, as celebration, and it is our choice how to live it. Both alternatives are always open. Man is born as freedom, man is not born with a fate. If there was fate, there would be no freedom. If there was fate, man would be a machine. A car can, cannot be a plane, airplane. An airplane cannot be a computer. A computer cannot be an oven. They have their fates. Everything is determined, predetermined. They have to follow a certain program. But man is not born like a machine. Man is born as absolute freedom. As each step he has to choose. And this is the most fundamental choice. Whether to live as prose or poetry, as logic or as love, as mathematics or as music, as matter or as consciousness. To live a mundane life or to live a sacred blissfulness. Become aware of it and choose diligently. Choose intelligently. Let your life become a poetry. Only then do you know what godliness is. Godliness is known only by the poets, mystics, painters, singers, dancers. And only in those moments when the painter forgets that he is a painter. Only in those moments when the musician forgets that he is a musician. Only in those rare spaces when the dancer disappears into his dance. Everybody a great poet, and if love cannot make you a poet, then nothing can. Love opens a totally different dimension in your being. Without love, you remain confined to the world of logic. Once love starts happening in your life, logic starts to disappear. The transcendence of logic happens. That's why the logical mind will always call love madness, blindness. Logic has always condemned love as blind, mad. It is called it all kinds of names for the simple reason that the intellect is incapable of conceiving it. It is a totally different world. It has nothing to do with arithmetic, with logic, with science. It is immeasurable, uncharted. Nobody knows exactly, precisely what it is. Even those who have gone deepest into it have found themselves almost dumb. It is inexpressible. But the experience is great. It's so aesthetic that it explodes in many ways. It may explode in dancing, in music, in poetry, in painting, any kind of creativity. Love is always creative, and the world has been so destructive for the simple reason that we have taught people to press their love energy. Love repressed becomes destructive. Love expressed becomes creativity. Love can be beautiful, but um, uh, what I learned in, um, in one of my classes of um, their legal work, there are two times that an individual looks at the world with going to the glass. It's one is when they fall in love, so it's when they start their own business. But you gain logic from both. But because you don't have logic of knowing what is happening, what's going to happen in the future with business or in love, you go blindly or that's when the bliss takes over. Either because you're less happy that you're starting your own business and two, you're happy that someone likes you enough to want to be with you. But I tell you what, trial and tribulations will wane or will occur. And that will make you more logical on so far as the future is concerned. But both are good. Love is good. And it can be a hindrance to Six, life is life only when love is burning bright inside you. When the flame of love is so bright that it starts radiating around you, that it starts reaching others, that people can feel it, that your love becomes almost so tangible that people can touch it, then it's not only a blessing to you, it's a blessing to everyone else too. The real man is always an enrichment to the world, to existence. He contributes much, and unless you contribute something, you'll never feel blissful. It is through contributing something to existence that you participate in the work of the Creator. Because you yourself become a Creator. 
be a creator is to be part of your system. So there's no other way.
Okay, let's uh, work on a drill. You two pair up. You two pair up. 